heavy rainfall that leads to flash flooding can have devastating impacts to property, economies, and life. Heavy rainfall rates most often occur with deep convection. The atmosphere must be conditionally unstable and significant lift must occur to lift the air mass through the level of free convection. Total precipitable water in the atmosphere is the amount of water that can be obtained from the surface to the top of the atmosphere if all of the water and water vapor were condensed to a liquid phase. In thunderstorms, the amount of rain often exceeds the total precipitable water. Most flash flood events yield very high precipitable water values, and the magnitude of precipitation is more tied to the climatological anomaly of precipitable water. You may be asking yourself, why don't all heavy rainfall events result in flash flooding? The reason that not all heavy rainfall events result in flash flooding has to do with many different factors, such as soil type, soil moisture, urbanization, and the size and the slope of the landscape. In the next portion of this video, we'll discuss specific case studies related to flash flooding events. On May 1, 2012, in Nashville, Tennessee, the Cumberland River that runs through the town is normally 25 feet deep, but on May 1, 2012, it ended up being 60 feet deep after a heavy rainfall event. People became trapped inside their houses, trying to escape through their doors, but the floodwaters held them back. Neighborhoods, landmarks, and the Grand Old Opry all faced destruction from the flood, and 26 people lost their lives. The Utah-Arizona border flood on September 14, 2015, resulted in the deaths of 20 people. 13 people in vehicles lost their lives as they were swept away by the floodwaters. Seven people lost their lives, and they were hiking in Zion National Park. The total rainfall during this event was one and a half inches, and it occurred in only 30 minutes. One of the most notable flash flood events in recent history was Category 4 Hurricane Harvey, which made landfall at 10 p.m. on August 25, 2017 in Port Aransas, Texas. After making landfall, Hurricane Harvey slowed to 5 miles per hour. Strong rain bands developed over Fort Bend and Brazaria counties during the evening hours of August 26 and spread to Harris County. These rain bands resulted in a rapid development of flash flooding between 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. On the morning of August 27th, there were additional rain bands that continued to develop and produce excessive rainfall amounts. The center of Hurricane Harvey slowly moved east-southeast and offshore. Heavy rainfall continued through August 29th and August 30th, contributing to the devastating flooding and catastrophic drainage issues, which made rivers rise greatly. The Flash Flood Guidance is a tool provided by the National Weather Service. This product gives the amount of rainfall needed over a given time period to cause a flash flood. There are two parts to the Flash Flood Guidance. There is the Rainfall Runoff Model which shows the relationship between rainfall and runoff for a given basin, and the Threshold Runoff, which is the ratio that gives the amount of runoff required to cause flooding of small streams. On the Flash Flood Guidance website, you'll find multiple tabs that can help assist to predict flash floods based on heavy rainfall and watershed characteristics. Upon clicking on the River Observations and Forecast tab, I was able to locate a hydrograph for the Lake Okeechobee watershed. This hydrograph demonstrates the flood stages that can occur in the Lake Okeechobee watershed. Some limitations of the Flash Flood Guidance tool is that it is not intended for use over urbanized areas and there is poor spatial resolution. The Flash Flood Guidance tool is still very useful in helping predict flash flood events by utilizing trends in rainfall amounts. 